sing my hallelujah.
so good. God, you're mm, 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 good. Lord, you're mm, 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 good. Oh, God, you're just so good. Hallelujah. For you deserve it, God. All of our worship, you deserve it, God. All of our worship, you deserve it, God. All of our worship, you deserve it, God. So we take this moment to dig deep because he deserves it from the very core of our being. God, we dig deep into our soul and lift up our worship to you alone. There's a warfare going on over what God is doing right now in this season. And the Lord says, as you give him a little bit of obedience, he's going to give you a lot of grace. But he's requiring us to respond to him so that he can move with his grace in our life to be able to be victorious. And the enemy is unleashing warfare right now because he wants to block and stop that which God is doing. But there's promises that the Lord says are going to be activated now in this season. The Lord said you're already moving in it. And if you're seeing yourself feeling like you're falling behind, don't resist what God wants to do in your life now. Give him that obedience. 
obedience and respond. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you that grace and I'm going to cause the windows of heaven to be opened up and I'm going to break strongholds in your family, in your lives, in your businesses. And the Lord says, I'm doing a corporate thing in this body. So begin to respond. Give him a little and he's going to respond with a lot. And let that momentum begin to gather in your life and let that relationship grow and that closeness and that intimacy with the Lord in this hour, says the Lord. Come on, give him some praise. We're going to do, come on, we're going to break some things this morning. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of destruction, every assignment against
place right now. We're in a good place to receive what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives today. So as you make your way back to your seats, thank you for entering in and being obedient to the Lord and allowing the Holy Spirit to move among us. Thank you, praise and worship team, for being obedient and being used by the Holy Spirit to allow him to do the work that he's doing today in our hearts. I'm so excited about today. We're so glad that each of you are with us. We're glad that those of you have joined in and chosen to worship with us here on the internet. We're so glad you're a part of our service. You're also our special guest. We know that there's guests and members there. We know that there's always guests here among us in the sanctuary as well. And if you're here for the very first time, we just want to take a moment as we greet each other to greet you. We want to make you feel welcome. Just a moment, we're going to reach out and greet you, but there's going to be a visitor registration card in the seat pocket in front of you and you if you'll grab that fill it out save it because at the end of the service we're going to give you an opportunity to come to the visitor welcome center and to present that as your ticket there to ask any questions that you have about us here at the life center we'll also be happy to agree with you in prayer so grab that but if you're here to the first time for the first time lift your hand just a moment we want to reach out to you right now at this time anybody here over here what about in this section back here in the back over here life center now is the time let's reach out to our neighbor to our guest tell them you're glad to see them you're glad they're family All right, I can, you all are doing a good job. We're going to continue on, though, as we prepare our hearts for our tithes and our offerings. Where's Pastor Samuel's about to come up in just a moment? We can make our way back to our seats, and Pastor Samuel's going to come encourage us to be obedient with our tithes and our offerings. Come on up, Pastor Samuel. Hallelujah. The Lord is faithful to us. He never leaves us without his presence. Amen. The thing I love about what he does is that every time his presence shows up, he's dealing with fear in a very aggressive way. Fear tries to rob you of faith. And 1 Peter 1 talks about how we've been born of incorruptible seed so that the faith that we have actually lasts beyond anything that actually happens in the earth meaning that it cannot fail and it cannot die. So every time his presence show up in the midst of us, it's his reassuring us that he's faithful to his covenant, saying that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you even unto the end of the world. That he's reminding us that not only am I dealing with the situations that you know about, but I'm already moving ahead of you because I've known the end, what? Before the beginning, that I am your God and I am fighting on your behalf. Our faith is the greatest weapon that we have to fight the enemy. And he is shoring up both our faith and our hope. So my challenge to you today is let your faith arise. Hallelujah. Believe him for the impossible. We serve the God that says all things are possible to what? Them that believe. We're going to push into a place where God now starts doing the miraculous without even a request. Why? Because it's on the heartbeat of him to fulfill his word concerning what he promised, not only to this house, but to, the, to your bloodline. I believe God is about to invade. We were in prayer and God began to deal with us on Wednesday night about divine recompense. And it became the decree that he just roared over us over and over and over again. That he's bringing divine recompense to your bloodline. That means radical salvation, radical deliverance, radical increase, changing your financial family tree. He's about to shift some things in your bloodline to bring divine recompense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we're giving today, we're giving in faith, knowing that God is about to move on our behalf and that we will not be deterred in any way, shape, form, or fashion 
from the promises that he has made unto us. Amen. There's an offering envelope in the seat pocket in front of you. We ask that you take that out. We want to be accountable to your gift. If you're giving via cash, we just ask that you fill out your name, your email address, check the cash box, put it in the envelope, we'll take care of it. If you're giving via check, make it payable to Life Center Ministries to let us know what your gift is for in that memo section. And you can put that either in the envelope or you can just drop that in the offering basket. If you're giving via credit card, we need your name, your address, your card number, your three-digit security code, and your expiration date. We will need all of that information to process your gift effectively. If you're giving via text, Send Life Center GA to 77977. Again, Life Center GA to 77977. You'll receive a link to PushPay where you'll be able to give your information there and we'll be able to process your gift on there. If you're giving online, we thank God for you. Click on the donate button. It's going to take you to push pay as well, where you'll be able to give your information and we'll be able to process your gift. The kiosk is in the back. And for those who are using the app, please make sure that you're using the right app. If you'll go to Life Center GA on Apple or Google, you'll be able to do that download and have that app. So you're given to the right church. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and let's declare the word of God over our seed as we're releasing in faith the fullness of his hand towards our lives. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's read. We declare that we were made in the image and likeness of God to live an abundant life in him. We choose to put on the mind of Christ and declare that we are full of divine wisdom for innovation, witty inventions, and creative ideas. We free ourselves from every limitation that would keep us from bearing much fruit. We declare favor on our jobs for promotions and advancements, divine increase to our businesses, homes, families, resources, bank accounts, ministry endeavors, and investments. We will purchase property and acquire land debt-free for kingdom purposes. We will have more than enough to live a debt-free life and to be able to bless others out of our overflow. We will demonstrate the kingdom of God everywhere that we go because we were made for more. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship with the praise and worship team as you give your offering.
time that you can get out your pens and your pads and your electronic notepads and your calendars and let's pay our attention to turn our attention to the overheads and let's document all the current events. March 18th through the 22nd, and March 23rd. Night sessions are from March 18th through the 22nd, from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Day session is March 23rd, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Taught by Elder Sharon Richardson. Remedy is the first of three training series on healing and deliverance. The series includes teaching, demonstration, activation, and corporate ministry. You will receive an understanding on God's plan for deliverance. The cost is $65. Restore, March 25th through the 29th. Night sessions are from March 26th through the 29th from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Day session is March 30th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The prerequisite is completion of remedy. Come receive an understanding of the legal ground that is given to the enemy. Cost is $65. Reclaim April 16th from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. and April 27th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reclaim will cover training of supernatural ministry process, application, and activation. The prerequisite is completion of both remedy and restore. Cost is $25. To register for all three modules will be a total of $135. For more detailed information, visit lifecenter.org.
preach and and then hurry right on back because at this time we're going to welcome apostle dr buddy up to the pulpit coat on. Let's just believe it's anointed, right? Everybody would like to have an anointed coat like Joseph had, you know. So good to see everybody. Let me tell you, announce that the Lord told me there's a miracle in the house today. A miracle in the house. I it may have happened. It may be happening. It may be going to happen, but there's a miracle today in the house, and we, we want to receive it. I'm, it it's here. What a wonderful time with the Holy Spirit. Let's invite him to this part of the service. Come, Holy Spirit. Show us what we need to see. Tell us what we need to hear. And let us understand clearly what it is that you're saying. We pray for the anointing upon our minds and upon our ears that they may receive truth and be set free from the truth. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you that it is your word that you prepared, that you have set apart for our, for our hearing and building our faith. So we pray for your presence. We give you this time from and our attention to you that you may speak to us. And all the saints in the room said amen. amen. God bless you. Please be seated and know that the Holy Spirit is well and alive and here today. And he's here to talk to you. What I may speak, he may, be, he may interpret it differently from the way I speak it to your heart. We hear that all the time. People will come up at the service and say, when you said such and such, it touched me right here and that hit my circumstance. And I'm thinking, I didn't know I said that. You, know, you just you let the Holy Spirit do put his anointing upon him. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about the spirit of generosity. Can I hear the amen for that? The spirit of generosity is so important that we understand that. And we have said and have been emphasizing this year, you were made for more. Say that with me. I am made for more. Amen, you are made for more. But then the question comes, more of what? Made for more of what? Well, you could say I'm made for more love than I've had, and that could be the part of it. Love could be, but you could say I want more spiritual strength or more spiritual maturity. How about anointing? Well, that would be good, wouldn't it? I want more anointing. I'm made for more of it. How about a depth of ministry? I really want to be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I want to be able to speak a word and it doesn't come back. It doesn't fall to the ground. It completes it to what it's intended to do. Or how about wealth? How about that? Would that be okay? You're made for more wealth. So we'll agree on that one, I believe. So, in, But there's some things as we look at, I'm made for more and more of all of these things that God would, would intend for us. We, there's some common things or common denominators, if you will, that we know has to happen. It tells us in, a, in we know that you have to have a desire. Amen? If you don't have a desire, you don't know what you're looking for more of. I mean, more what? More, I have to have a desire. And we know Psalms 31, 4 says, uh, or 34, 6, uh, the, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you what? The desires of your heart. So you seek him and it tells us, we know in Hebrews 11, 1, very common but very a strong verse where it says uh, faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So you must have a hope in your life in order for substance to come into reality that more has to re be realized through faith. Faith holds it. You want to get it released. Now, if God holds everything and he has a purpose and a plan for your life even before the foundation of the earth and it's settled up in heaven and you want it to come to earth, you have to release it. It's waiting for you. And God says, I want to not hold back. I want to give you. If you ask for a fish, I'm not going to give you a stone. I'm going to give you what you need or whatever it is. So we know that you have to have that desire. We also know you have to pay a price. 
as a price. I, the Bible teaches that very clearly, and it, you must be persistent. That's taught throughout the Bible, perseverance, persistence. And we also know you have to start right where you are. Not someday, one day, but you have to start where you are. You have to believe that Jesus is and desires for you to start right where you are. Now, we, Jesus himself taught us about giving. They asked Jesus the question, what about giving? And he defined it very clearly. And it's also the way that we understand how you get more of anything that you want. He said, give and it shall be given, shaken together, pressed down, good measure. As it is given out, it returns back to you. As it's measured out, it's measured back to you. So if you say to me, I want more love, then I'm going to tell you what Jesus said, go love the unlovely. Go love those that won't love you back. That's the way you get more love. You see, that, that's a pure love. And when you come with a pure love, that releases it from heaven, from the place of faith to come into your life to be realized. So if you want more love, if you want more uh, of anything, if you say, I want more spiritual depth, then you start practicing what you have and you use it and it will take you deeper, but you cannot hope it in a, in a, without putting it into action. It is action that it builds you up. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So you have to build it up like that. And so we know when it says given, it shall be given. It doesn't mean just finances. It means whatever it is, but it does work for finances. If you put money into the seed principle works, it's going to bring back something to you in return. My, uh, You have to have... The, Jesus called it the having the right attitude. If you want to be blessed, you have to be what? A blessing. Come on, you have to be a blessing. And, and if you want something, you have to plant it. So that's what Jesus is, is telling us. You know, Jesus said, store up your treasures where? You're not sure? <laughs> Did you think it was the stock market? Is that what you thought? No. He said, you can't trust the stock market. He, he said, store it up where moth and dust doesn't come in and take it away. In other words, as it's stored up in heaven. I remember one time I ran out of money and I said, Lord, I need some money and I've got some with you. I'd like to have some of it back. <laughs> and uh, he did it. <laughs> he sent me money back. But I knew I'd stored it up there. And I said, I need a return on my investment, please. Thank you so much. So we have to watch and, and uh, rejoice in the day. He talks about it. You will receive it back. And he says, rejoice in that day and leap for joy for your reward is great in heaven. How many of you got a reward in heaven? That's pretty good. The rest of you are thinking about what I said, aren't you? You're not sure. Well, if you plant it, you got some reward. Now, the more you plant, the more reward, okay? We call it the principle of reciprocity you put in. Let me tell you, you plant the seed in God's kingdom. He brings it to fruition, and he multiplies it and sends it back to you. Now, what better deal is there in that? And then that, that that's as good as I know. If I'd have had that deal when I was in the investment business, I, I'd probably still be in it because I couldn't get out of it. People would keep lining up, you know, and they'd say like that. But you get my point. God's faithful to do what he promised, and he will do it. But that's this seed principle. Now, I want to talk about, in light of all of that, the principle of generosity. How do you get generosity? Well, you know the answer, but I'm going to tell you more about it, Okay. You give, and it will be given back to you, pressed down, good measure, shaken together, and running over. And so you will have increase. Now, I want to give you two stories to demonstrate this today from the Bible. Both of these are somewhat controversy. So that makes it more interesting, doesn't it? I say that so you'll listen. Okay. Don't you go to sleep on me. But, but there are two stories in the Bible, and both of those have... People have a lot of different interpretation, and, and I probably preached on both of them at one time, so I won't preach on them. I'll just summarize them for you. Is that okay? Boy, you're quiet. I, I don't know. One's in the New Testament. One's in the Old Testament. 
That's kind of the way it's supposed to be, I think. Talking about things that we want to talk about money this morning. Is that okay? Yes. All right, thank you. You didn't, I didn't wait for an answer. It's okay, okay. But you all know that money's amoral. It has no morality to it. It's either good or bad. Money is an exchange. It's a way that we can take something and replace it with something else. It's a means of exchange. But the spirit that attaches to that is a spirit that reigns in your heart. It comes from your heart to your wealth or from your wealth to your money, and there it takes on a spirit. So whatever spirit's in your heart, that's the spirit's going to attach itself to your finances. Come on, you know, I stepped right on your big toe, but it's all right, and you needed to hear that. But it will, it will attach itself. And oftentimes, when we don't know, sometimes we don't know how to change that spirit within us. Now, one of these I want to talk about is, you know, when we, well, let me say this. When you speak of the spirit of generosity, all we have to do is go back to John 3.16. That is the spirit of generosity. When I was thinking this morning, writing in, when I think of all that God has, and he wanted us to have it. I think one day when we get to heaven, we're going to look and say, I had no idea what heaven was like, but now it makes everything in the past worth it all. Come on, somebody needs to say amen. You know that's right. So let's go on. you <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So anyway, the this, this story, first one is in Luke 16. Now you're familiar with it because I preached on it not too long ago about the unjust uh, steward, the one who took the money and his, the owner came to him and says, what is this I hear about you that you've been taking advantage of the customer? Now get that. That's a key point of this parable that Jesus was telling because the unjust steward was not robbing the owner. He was robbing the customer. And the owner heard about it and said, wait a minute, you're not managing yourself well. You're taking more than you should, and therefore you've got to be held accountable. And so we know what happened, and then Jesus is speaking to these Pharisees, and he goes on and he says, later on the unjust servant said, oh, I can't beg, I'm too proud, I'm too, I'm too poor not to have money, and I don't know how to work, I, I've never worked, I've always worked from my head, what am I going to do? Now, he had a spirit of mammon. You see, a spirit of mammon attaches to your, your money or your resources because a spirit of mammon says, I cannot spend because it would affect what I want. If I gave or something, I can't do that because then I wouldn't be able to do what I want to do. See, we got at the first, we reversed it. And so he goes on, and interestingly, Jesus says, as he's given them this parable in this eighth verse, this is a strange verse. And so the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in the generating than in the sons of life. What did he do? He went to each of his customers and he said, how much did, see, he didn't even know. How much do you owe me? Because they owed a certain amount to the owner, but what he had put on top of it, he didn't really know what they owed. And they said, well, we owe this much. He said, well, strike it down to that. And then he went to the next one and said, how much oil do you bought? How much do you owe? And he told him, and he said, well, I'm giving you a deep discount. Now, what, was the, what happened there that made him shrewd that Jesus was commending him? Get this, church. He changed his heart from a spirit of mammon to a spirit of generosity. Oh, wait a minute. This ain't working. I've got to change. And, and Jesus said, because you've been shrewd, you figured something out. Now you can operate your life 
in a spirit of generosity. And why did he do it? He says, if I give, it shall be given back to me, pressed down, good measure, shaken together. So as I give to them, they will take care of me, and one day I will have an income that will prepare myself to live beyond this point. But if I keep on beating up with the spirit of mammon, that won't happen. So, Lord, I get it. Bing, the light turns on. That's the way it works. And that's why Jesus, look at what else Jesus said in, that, in those great. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous, that's, those are worldly monies, converting them from worldly to spiritual, from earthly to heavenly. Okay. And he says, unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Get this one. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. But he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in his mind. If you can't manage your earthly possessions, how in the world can God trust you with your spiritual things? Which are the greater things? Come on. All right. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit you to trust the true riches? If you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Now, we got to get this. No servant can serve two masters. Can't do it. You can't do it. And for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. If you've got the spirit, there are three spirits we're going to quickly talk about. One of them is spirit of mammon, which says that, you know, if I do that, that's going to have to deny myself. In other words, I don't trust God to do what he said to deliver it to me. The other one is the spirit of poverty, which says if I don't hold on to what I got, I'm not going to have enough. I'm going to run out. And it's just not enough to go around, so i got to hold on to it. But when God blesses me, then I'll release it. Oh, <laughs> Oh, I used to have a man I worked with, and he used to say, when God gives me twice as much as I need, I'll give him half of it back. <laughs> Think about that one, huh? <laughs> so, you, there's that spirit of generosity that says it all belongs to the Lord. I am a steward of what is his, and as I give, I give which proves up my faith, and then out of that place, we are able to, to get a return back on our investment. Now, mammon is temporal. It always looks for the short term. Generosity looks for the long view, the long term. And that's what the unjust steward did. He went from looking short term, how can I get more? And the truth was, he didn't have enough, did he? Because he said, I'm in trouble. I mean, if he fires me, I'm living day to day, month to month, moment to moment, and if I lose my job, I have nothing. He had not been planting. That's what we're trying to help. I think you all know that we're in that place. And so it's the thing about it is that one thing about money, you can't fake it. You can fake your friendliness. You can even fake your spirituality. I know if I saw some of you on Saturday night, I wouldn't believe that same person I talked to in church. Some of you can do a good job, but you can't fake the money. It's the reality. I'll stop there and go on to point two. <laughs> it's kind of like being unequally yoked. You know, you say, well, you know, God will work through me and I'll be a witness and a testimony and they'll change. You better get that straight before you tie the knot. 
but tie the knot. Okay. You, you can't, it just doesn't happen the way we like it. That's rationalization. But anyway, like, like that, the enemy wants you to have not, and God wants you to have. So how does the enemy work? What does the enemy do to get, keep you from getting more than you should or to be worth more or be more? He gets you to break his, God's principles. Violate a principle of God, and God it has given his principle to us very clearly. Jesus taught us those principles. That's why we have so many, um, so many parables in the Bible to give us examples. And whatever you want, you have to believe that God will provide it through his principles. Now, that's not sometimes instant pudding, okay? It takes time. But the first thing you have to do, as I said, is make a decision to start right where you are right now and say, God, I want to be like the unjust steward. I want to change my heart. I see what I need to see, and I'm, I'm not playing games with you anymore. I want to be straight with you. I want to get what it is that's right. So, Lord, I'm giving myself to you to do a miracle in me and change my heart right now I'm a I, it feels uncomfortable to me but I'm going to allow you to let me be uncomfortable till you can transform me into being what you want me to be can I hear an amen this morning you see he said you can't serve two masters when you serve you whoever whatever whoever you serve you're going to become like and if you serve somebody you're going to be you're going to take care of them you're going to give to them you're going to make a priority for what their needs are you're going to have an allegiance you're going to make a sacrifice you're going to do honor that and at that you serve you're going to serve and you cannot divide that allegiance Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all of these things will be added unto you. In other words, if you want to be a good steward, you put God first. Okay, you cannot serve money. If you serve money, it will possess you. And some people with the spirit of poverty serve it more than people with the, than, than you with the, the mammon, really. If you serve, if you make it serve you, then you will possess it. It won't possess you. You'll possess it. But you've got to make it serve you. You will not serve it. It will serve you because you have the spirit of generosity. That's why he said in Luke 16, 9, And I say to you, make friends for yourself of unrighteous, unrighteous mammon, and when you fail, you will receive it unto an everlasting home. It will serve you for eternity if you do it. You can't serve two masters. It's impossible. So that the question is, what's in your heart? You have to be sensitive. Some years ago, I had a very good year and made a great deal of money that year. And so I, I was concerned about paying all those taxes. And it was more than I wanted to pay. And so I went to different to get advice from different uh, advisors and accountants and lawyers. And I went, finally I was referred to a, a, um, a high, high end, we'd call them, very expert on taxes. So I had an appointment with him. It was very sophisticated. I, I think it was in Starbucks, if I remember. <laughs> and I said, Okay, here's the deal. Here's what's happened. Here's the money I owe. And he looked at it and he said, that's, that's, that's sizable. And I said, I, you and I both know that now. And he talked about it and he said, well, here's, you could do this, this, and this, but I don't know. Finally, you know what he said? He said, if I were you, I wouldn't pay it. <laughs> he said, I just couldn't pay it. Excuse me? You're the expert. You know what I did? I went straight home and wrote the check to the IRS right then. Bam! I said, you're not putting that spirit in me. I guarantee you that spirit of mammon is not going to happen. I had already tied to the church, and I was ready now to write it to the IRS because I knew that if he planted that seed in my mind, it might take root, and I did not want to spend time in Sing Sing or wherever you... <laughs> Wherever you spend time, that may be old. I don't know. 
But you got to plant those seeds. When the enemy comes and tries to give you some false information, you say, out of here, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to write that check right now. You're not, you're not stealing from my, the one that I serve. So what's in your heart? That's what we're talking about. What's in your heart? What do you got in your heart? What are you building up? A spirit is in your heart. It comes from your heart. That's where your faith is. That's where the place of where it's being held for you to be more. You were made for more. How do you get more? You're more by giving and letting God reproduce it and turn it back to you. Second character I want to talk about. It's a little controversial. We find that character over in Numbers 22. Interesting man background to it was there was in King Balak they were well the Israelites were coming through the different places in the wilderness and they had really done a job on the Amorites they had totally defeated them and the word got out and everybody was wondering I hope I'm not next I hope they avoid me but then they were coming right through Moab so Balak who was the king of Moab he looked out and he said man they will make toast out of us we won't have a chance I got to do something. So he went and he and he, the Moabites came together with the Canaanites and, and they went and got the Midianites and they all came together and they said, okay, this is going to be how we're going to do it. We got the right idea. There is a prophet. His name is Balaam and Balaam has the reputation if he curses it, it's cursed. If he blesses it, it stays blessed. Now, how would you like to have that reputation? If you, if you prophesied, it's a done deal. It's going to happen. And he said, now, he is a prophet of reputation. What we need to do is go over there and get him to come back over here and curse those Israelites. That's an that's an easy fix. So he gets, they get together a nice payroll and they put it together and they send it over to Balaam and they say to Balaam, look, here's all this money and look at these beautiful people. These are important people we've sent over here to you. Now all we want you to do, this is very simple, come back and curse these people and we'll give you all that money. That's all we got to do is say it. Well, Balaam, he says, well, let me go ask God. Ask God to whether he's going to curse your own people? Come on. He said, well, I'll go talk to God. And God, he did go talk to God. And it was interesting. God asked him a question when he went to talk to God. And God says in this verse 9, who are these people? <laughs> Do you think God knew? <laughs> what he was doing saying, hey, Balaam, wake up. Who are these people? You, ought to, you need to ask yourself that question. Well, they're the people that came over here, the Midianites, and they came over together, and uh, they want me to curse the people. And God said, absolutely not. I'm not I, listen, Balaam, I'm going to bless them, not curse them. Yeah. So he turned around and says, hey, even, I, you can't, uh, I can't, I can't go. God said no. The Lord said no. So they left, and like most very wealthy sources, they said, well, what are we going to do? Well, uh, you know, we're going to raise the price. Everybody's got a price, right? So they go back with the more money and more important people, and these, they said, we're sending you the really pretty people, the beautiful people, all the money. They're sending them to you and all this money and all you have to do is come bless, no, curse these people. Well, Balaam was real smart. He said, I'll go ask God. He already had the answer. What was he trying to do? Get God to change his mind. He was in the wall because he had, he had the wrong spirit in his heart. And he says, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll go ask the Lord. And the Lord, he went back and he asked the Lord. And the Lord says, okay, you can go back, Balaam, with one condition. You will say only what I tell you to say. That's all the condition. Just go back and say that. 
So Balaam says, great, I'll do it. So he tells him, I'll go back with you. He, he left off half of the equation. The other half of the equation is, I can only say what the Lord tells me, and I know what he's going to say. He's already told us that he only blesses these people. But he didn't want to do that because he was thinking, if I get there, God may just let this happen. <laughs> Don't you tell me you hadn't been there. I know better than that. I have too. You know, well, if I'm obedient. So sure enough, he first told him, he said, hey, even if you gave me all the silver and all the gold and put it in a place, I, could, I, I couldn't do it if God said no. Well, the scripture said he got up early the next morning. He didn't tell them why he was going. He just said, I'm ready to go. And it made, you know, I wanted to say it ticked God off, but I won't use that language. I'll just say it made God mad, okay? <laughs> God got angry with him. Why? Because he knew what was in Balaam's heart. And he knew that Balaam was going in hopes that somewhere he would find a loophole. Somewhere there's a way to get this done. So he took the, he got on his donkey early in the morning and headed out. And you know, God was upset with him. So he said, okay, Balaam. He tried to get his attention, couldn't do it. Why? Because he was determined he was pressing against all resistance to get to the place where the money pot was. That's where, he, where, where the honey hole was. That's where he wanted to get to. He wanted to get to where the money was. Somehow or another, it would work out. So he, he goes there, and, and on his way, the donkey sees an angel. He goes over in the field, in the ditch, and Balaam gets all upset because he, he can't wait to get there. He's ready to get there. Something's going to happen. And so he gets the donkey back on the trail, and the donkey sees the angel again, and he, he, he wants to stop, and Balaam's beating him. Come on, church, somebody. <laughs> Finally, they, the, the angel backs up, to a very narrow place where there's no way to get around the angel. He's got a great big sword, and he's standing up there, and the donkey sees him. Balaam doesn't. He's too, he's too preoccupied with what's, how this thing's going to work out. Crushes his foot, falls down. He has to fall down. He can't turn around. He's stuck between these walls or these in the vineyard, and then Balaam really gets upset. And he starts beating on him and beating up on the donkey. And finally, the revelation comes. Sometimes God has to get you in the tight spot. I'm talking to them over here right now. <laughs> Sometimes get you in the tight spot to get you to see what you should have seen anyway. So you say, oh, I see it now. So, But it's so funny. Listen to this conversation between Balaam and the donkey. It's so crazy. I mean, the donkey's having a conversation with, because God can't get through any other way. And sometimes he'll use extreme measures. And he may use somebody that you think of as a donkey, but they're talking to you and you're not listening. And all of a sudden you say, where do they get that wisdom? Where do they get that? They're not spiritual and they're telling me things. And I don't know how they know that. I thought they were... I thought they would not measure up to me. So listen to this conversation. And then he goes on and it says, The angel Lord stood in an arrow in between the vineyards and a wall on the side and a wall on that side. And the donkey saw the angel and he pushed himself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. Then the angel Lord went further and stood in a narrow place. That's where he did it. So Balaam's anger was aroused and he struck the donkey with his staff and the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. And she said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you struck me with these three times? And Balaam answered back. <laughs> because you abused me, I wish that there was a sword in my hand, and if it were, I would kill you. <laughs> what a conversation. So the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you've ridden ever since I became yours to this day? Was I ever disposed to do that, this to you? And he said, no. 
<laughs> then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel and it made sense. Why? And the, and the angel said, why have you struck your donkey three times? Behold, I've come out to stand against you because your way is perverse before me. Your heart's not right. You got a spirit of mammon on you. In other words, you're planning somehow to get this thing worked out. Now, if you go back to that first character, the unjust steward, he got it. In other words, shrewdness of the revelation was, oh, this is not working. I need to change my heart. He changed his heart and he got the result. Here is Balaam and he's still pressing and pressing and pressing. But I don't need to tell you the whole story. You might want to read it. It's interesting. Numbers 22, 23, 24. Because the fact is, Balaam finally figured out a way to get that money. He finally figured it out. And he ended up in a tragic, tragic death. Because he was so determined. Why was he so determined? Because it was in his heart. You have to examine what's in your heart. And so we begin to see that there's, there's whatever the spirit is, is going to come out one way or the other. So he had the spirit of mammon. He had the spirit of deception. He had a spirit of compromise. And God could not change his mind. He had to talk through a donkey to even get his attention. And you know, it, 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 you, Balaam was so focused on that money and fame because they not only offered him money, that was the main thing, they offered him fame and position. All he would have to do is say, I curse you in the name of God. And that's all he'd have to do, but that was a great deal because that meant his loyalty was with the money, not with the Lord. So the guy, so the that was what um, you were made for more. That's what we're talking about. How do you get more? Whatever it is that you need, that's what you've got to do. If you need more love, you've got to give love. It doesn't come by hoping and wishing for it. It starts there. But that's not where you get the manifestation of it. You get the manifestation when you get activated in it. When you start doing it, teach, train, activate. That's what we're, we're talking about, not, not only in every area. And, uh, you know, Balaam, what was the takeaway? Balaam formed his own plans, and he tried to get God to bless it. He tried to get God's permission and his express will to make it happen. He was trying to get God to change his mind. See, those godly principles are what we have to build on. They're settled in heaven, but they work. They work. And that's why you were made for more. Now, my question to you, if you're made for more, how are we going to to look at our hearts and see what's in our heart, right? Is that right? It's not what's in your mind, it's what is the heart. It's a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, we are in that, obviously, in that season. Today is our capitalization day, and I yes, I'm challenging you to look in your heart today and to see what's in your heart. Because I know your intention is good. I don't doubt that. Your intention is that I want to be a blessing. I want to, I want to be a part. You see, we making friends. As we, we started on this uh, three years ago, actually, 16, 17, 18. This is 2019 of having a capital campaign because we needed to make this place functional, and attractive so people could come in and we can make friends with them. We can help them get the, and start serving the Lord that we serve. They, a lot of people have no idea of that what they're doing is only at a limited amount. Now, don't get nervous, okay? <laughs> don't let your mind run away. 
Let's just look at our hearts for a minute and say, Lord, I want you to make my heart the way you want it to be because I want to demonstrate to you the power of your work. I tell you, there's a miracle in here today. It may be physical. It may be financial. It may be with your family. I don't know your relationship. But somewhere there's a miracle here today. I know that. I know that. God told me that. And I'm believing on it. And I'd like somebody, when it happens, to come and tell us what it was. Let me know. But you were made for more, but more is waiting to be activated. Don't you get quiet on me. We're at the good place now. This is a point. We've got to look at our hearts and say, God, this is where I am. This is where I, I, I want to be. I must start right now. Can I hear an amen? Come on. Now, I want you to put up. I want to show you, for example, what has happened. When you start, you know, when you start refurbishing your house, if you've ever done that, then what you know is you put your, your, your wish list out, right? And you say, this is all. Now, we're going to watch a little video, then I'm going to go in some detail with you. Can you give us that little quick video? Life Center, Renovation Capital. Okay, hold that one right there. Now, what we did when we began, we had our wish list, just like you have everything that we needed. Of course, you're always in any renovation. You always find out your things you didn't know you needed, you're going to need. You know what I'm talking about, right? That all of a sudden, you have to have greater electricity. The fuse the box wasn't big enough. The amperage was not enough to do all of the new equipment and all these lights and these sound. So we had to have more of that put in. We found out that, of course, we had to have a whole new roof. We repaired all our trans our HVACs so that air conditioning and uh, they, they, they said well we can give you three to five years that's all we think we, you'll get from them before you'll have to replace them well sure enough that ended the three years and now we have to replace one of the major ones so all of these things happen so when you put it all together it was a great deal of money so when we had our first time we started and we had things we had to do and we had to replace uh, HVAC. We still got to in 18, but when we got through, we had a total of needed $257,000. That's what we needed for 2018, right here, 257000 How much came in from your giving? 124000 That meant we were $125,000 lacking in what we were doing well we had started you know and how do you keep on going you you uh, you continue to work and you go get what came out of reserves and then we actually borrowed money from the bank to keep it going to finish it so that we could finish these chairs and this this platform and change the ceiling and change the lighting and doing that so we ended up well I Put your peace. I know how some of you are. We paid off the money back since then. But you see, but now we still lacked, and so we had to carry over 
into 2019 some of those things that we had. For example, I thought you were going to fix the women's bathroom. Boy, have I ever heard that one. Oh, man, you can imagine. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, we're going to fix the women's bathroom first. Come on, ladies, help me a little bit here. <laughs> That's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to finish the nursery. All the carpet, all the changes. We've got, we did, we're all ready to open up more space. It's going to be so good. Say, so good. So good. Thank you. And so we ended up, you see, we put actually what we could do we ended up with 125, but we had to change electrical. We didn't know that. We had to spend 3,000 on the plumbing. We had to remove a tree that fell across our neighbor's lawn. It was a great big old tree, probably 150 years old. Had to have that removed, and when we had to change the parking lot light. Those things go on, like we finished the parking lot. Now, that's not to discourage us. That just means it may take a little longer. Okay, we're, it's going to get done, and we're going to have what God intended for us to have, but he's going to cause us to earn it. So we need to do all that we need to do. That still got to replace an air conditioner. We're going to renovate our restrooms, all of them. It's going to take $45,000. That's a nice restroom, isn't it? 25000 for the social hall, renovations, carpets, and paint, and down the line, and then signage. We've got to get a new sign. We're trying to get the city to give us permission to put a new sign out there. Goodness, it's bigger. It's a big job. And so we, well, we're working on it. And uh, we got the classroom renovations and the new carpet and the finish. Our studio, the little house is being finished up. We're going to have a wonderful studio. You're going to be able to come in and teach and preach. How about that? You're going to be able to put the word out 24-7. So all of that's in the works. And uh, do you know, for example, that we have three times as many people watch us than come? You see, that's why we need a studio. Yes, give the Lord some praise. Now, all of those that are watching and re-watching, we invite you to participate with us. We'd love to have you participate in this campaign. We'd love it. You're part of us anyway. So you see where we, why we say, and the reason I went into this detail, I want you to understand that that's why something hasn't been completed yet. It's because we said this is our big want list. This is everything that we want to do. It's going to cost probably five hundred to five hundred fifty thousand dollars. We've invested so far about two hundred and fifty thousand. We have about another two hundred fifty thousand to go. Now, if you want to write that check, we will receive it with gratitude right now, and then we will end this conversation. <laughs> but I'm assuming that has not the miracle that I'm believing for, but it could be. So anyway, we are moving towards that, but we are going to have another opportunity to check and participate with what God's doing. Can I hear an amen? Amen. I mean, look at, let's, church, it's, 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 believe me, I've dealt with money seemingly all my life, and I can tell you it works. Dr. Mary and I have tithed all of our married life and beyond that, and when God was blessing us, we got up to 30 to 35 percent of our income. When we sold our business and we were all ready, God says, now give it away. Excuse me? You see, I was so sure. <laughs> okay, God. I was so sure that God was going to change his mind and let me go back into business. So I had a little ready to go back over here. My back door was already prepared. And I said, now, when God changes his mood, <laughs> who's it sound like, right? <laughs> I didn't have that Balaam spirit, but no. And I thought when he changed his mind, I'll have the resources to go back. And then he said, no, I think the best way to close that door is to give it away. 
But I will go ahead and tell you this, and I've told you this before, but I said, okay, God, I can do that. You see, I'd put in Dr. Mary's name. <laughs> Ain't I smart? <laughs> so I go down for breakfast, and I said, you know what God told me? She said, I don't know, but let me tell you what he told me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> see ya. But seriously, and I was serious at that time, but I, we did it. But you know what? God said at that time, I'll take care of you from now on. I got you. I got you back. I said, oh, God, I hear you and I believe you. And that's been the truth. And I'm thankful for that. I am so thankful for that. That's a testimony. It's a testimony. So you're made for more, but we've got to start making more because what you do in this investment will last for years and years. It may or may not last in this facility. It, it'll wear out again. But it will, the truth will go on as we change lives. Lives will change lives. We're moving into a season. It's already begun. Bishop Hammond calls it the saints movement. It's where the saints do the work of the ministry. As it says in, uh, in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, to raise up the saints to do the work of the ministry. You see, we preached and preached and preached for hundreds of years, but we didn't pe take people from the preaching to the activating. It's not only you can hear God's voice through the preaching, you can hear God's voice through your spirit. And that's it. And, and so now is the time where people are saying, I want to know more. I want that power. I want to be activated in it. I, I've heard the message over and over and over again, but I want to know how do you apply it in my life every day. And we're moving in that. That is what we're doing. And we're committed, I think you know this, to do everything we can, meaning the, the ones that God has put in leadership, to break every spirit of curse, every spirit of poverty, every spirit of mammon. And we it, it's in my heart to see the Life Center prosper. And he will do that if we have the right heart. I can't change your heart. God can't. But I really can help do God what he wants to do. So you're, you're, you're on your way. But we've got to start there. So that's what we need. Now we're going to put up there some uh, kind of what happened last year to give you an idea of how easy this can be. Okay, give me the next slide that breaks it down by families. We have broken down how much each person can give. We also need some pledge cards. We got them? You ready to pass them out? Give me mine. All right. Give Dr. Mary hers. <laughs> Ours and hers. Okay, everybody raise your hand. Get you a pledge card right now. And or a checkbook or an envelope, whatever it is that you're going to do. But we need to break it down. And we, uh, last year, based on the 137,000 we need, it breaks down this way, and you find out where you belong. $5,000 per family. We had 10 people that gave $5,000. I'm hoping that we'll have 10 this year. 10 people gave $5,000. Now, don't let me limit you. You can make that 10. And if God says do it, you need to do that, okay? We don't hope everybody will up it. And God is faithful to do what he said he would do. $2,500, we have on a goal there of, how many, does anybody know? You remember? Six? Six at 2,500, is that you, Pastor Sammy? Oh, come on down here and explain this stuff. I, I'm looking at lights. I can't see. Okay, and then a thousand dollar per family. Yeah. Thirty-five 
All right. So we had uh, 10 at 5, 6 at 2,500, 15 at 1,000. We had uh, 80 people to give 500, 40 to give 250, and then it was, hold on, 70 to give 100. Did you get that? 70 people give $100 over three months, and 80 can give 500. 500. 500 over the next three months. Now, if it needs to go four, five, six, that's all right, too. Absolutely. But I'm, we're putting it into three so we can get our work done in three, but we're going to keep moving if the pledge is there because I believe you will, God will enable you to do what it is that's yours in your heart. Come on, I want a little amen here this morning. We got to, where is Mario and his giving music? Come on, Mario, where are you and your giving music, your anointed giving music? Yeah, come on. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Amen. Come on. Now, I'm not going to ask show of hands, but you already know if where you fit in that. Now, don't settle for the lowest. Don't say, Phew, I can get by with that. Come on, I know I got that one. Stretch yourself a little bit. Dr. Mary and I are going to stretch a little bit this year. And, 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 and we're going to do it because we want God to take care of us. And he said he would, and I believe that. If you don't give, I'm going to get past Samuel. Pray it in. He can do it. Amen. Past Samuel, let's pray to the Lord right now. You bring prayer to us that will open hearts as we are thinking about this and contemplating this and waiting for the Holy Spirit to speak and he will speak. The Holy Spirit is interested in every part of your life, your finances, your family, and every part. And this is the way that we're going to allow him to speak. So listen, go ahead. So Father, we thank you and honor you for what you desire to do in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, that you have known the end of our days before the beginning. And we thank you, Lord God, that you're stirring inside of our hearts to birth this new season in our lives, Lord God, that as we make room for more, yes. we thank you, Father, that you're challenging yes. even our faith to live in a place that, Lord God, it's not lived yet. We thank you that you've decreed over us that the just shall live by faith, and we choose to agree, Lord God, with what you have written in heaven concerning us. We thank you, Father, that the heavens are stirring in our direction, that you are moving in our hearts, Lord God, to give us the very thing that we need to open up and release so that you can pour into our lives Lives, the exceeding and the abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We thank you that you have planned this day, Lord God, before time began. And we thank you, Father, that this seed has the power to bring your breakthrough into our lives. We thank you for the release, Lord God, of heaven's yes, authority. We thank you, Lord God that at the speed yes. of our faith, angels are released. At the speed, Lord God, of our agreement with you, we thank you that immediately, Lord God, those things that were set against us, Lord God, they are overturned, Father, and you bring forth the justice of God in our direction. We thank you that the spirit of delay is broken at the speed of our obedience. We thank you, Father, that obedience opens up our lives to the realm of your abundance. And we say, Lord God, that our yes is yes, Father. Father, that we will not give you, Lord God, something that is haphazard, but Lord God, we thank you for the principle of David, that he would not offer unto you, Lord God, something that he got for free, Father, that he would not give you an offering on the altar that he did not pay for. So God, even in this moment, we set our desires on the altar. We set our mind on the altar. We set our lives on the altar. Father, we thank you that as we release this unto you, we know that you know every need that we have need of, that is already taken care of. You said by your word that you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. So we thank you, Lord God, that we agree that you are our Father, that you are Abba, Lord God, and in you we have no want. We have nothing, Lord God, that is lack. But Father, we thank you that the riches of heaven, Lord God, belong to us as your sons and your daughters, that we are heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So we thank you now, Lord God, yes. that as you're speaking to our hearts, we thank you that our future is being written. It is being decreed, Lord God. 
It is being echoed from heaven into earth that you're moving things in the earth to align with favor for us. That we will increase, Lord God, in our favor with you and with man. That as we obey your word, Father, you cause things to align for your purpose yes. and will. Yes. That everything that needs to Glory, be broken Lord. will be broken. That everything, Lord God, that has been a door that's been shut before us, you are the God that opens doors that no man can close. We decree in the name of Jesus that your will is going forth concerning us. And Father, as we agree with it, we thank you that your promises are yea and amen. Yay and, amen. and if you spoke it, Lord God, you will perform it. We thank you that we rest in those promises in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. We praise you, Lord, for your goodness. Oh, Lord, there's no lack in your kingdom. We thank you today, Lord, that your abundance lives today. I thank you for each and every heart that you're tendering right now towards you. I thank you, Lord, for the conviction of that you place upon it. Out of that place, we break every spirit of poverty that would try to exist, Lord. That uh, there's a place of that that it, because of past hurts or shortages are not coming up, that fear reigns and is. We know that fear is broken in Jesus' name, or that that desire to have and to to have more and to have more as preoccupied hearts. We bind that in Jesus' name. And we say, Lord, open up the heart of generosity that we may start right where we are in Jesus' name. Come on, you remember when Jacob's ladder they went up to heaven, got it, brought it back down, up and down. God, the angels are going to take this up to heaven and bring it back down to you. I, I, that is our, that's why you're made for more, much more, much more. But we must get started with what we have. Thank you for being a steady giver. And this is, I realize, above the giving, and you always have a lot of opportunities. You can't take advantage of all of them, but let's try to take advantage of this one, can we? Will we? Yeah. Okay, if you are, have filled out your pledge card or written your check or got your, uh, your credit card, uh, you know, Pastor Sam has already told you all the ways that you can give. A debit card, credit card, out in the hall, in the, in the, everywhere. We got you covered, okay? That that you want to text it or you want to use seven seven nine seven seven to use online. You can do that. Just be sure it's to the right church. It's the blue one with the blue globe and and uh, whatever it is that you want to do. Let's let's do it. I, I, I are you ready? If you've already filled out your pledge card, pass it to your left and I want the ushers just to pick them up at the end of the some of you got to think about it a little bit more or pray about it a little bit more but it says in Luke 16 if you can't be faithful in your own vineyard God can't plant another vineyard for you and so let's be faithful where God's given us. If you're here, it doesn't matter whether you're a member, an associate, a preacher, a pastor, or a minister of the gospel, let's participate. Again, I encourage all of you online to participate. All you got to do is go to that donate button. Donate to the what God's doing. Thank you, Apostle Buddy. Thank you for speaking to our hearts today. Thank you for the opportunity to express the heart of the Father in our midst. And John 3.16 says that God so loved the world and that he gave. And we are making that choice today to give. But I'd like to also give those of you who are here in the room and those who are watching online the opportunity to consider 
the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he gave for us, for me personally, for you personally. And if there are those who are here or online who have never made the choice, made the decision to give your entire life to Jesus, to give him your heart, to give him your time, to give him your life, now is the time. I'd like to open up this moment in time to ask, is there anyone here who does not know Jesus in the fullness of all that he has brought for us? Is there anyone here in the room? Perhaps there is someone online who has heard the message about the spirit of generosity and made the connection with the love of God that was expressed through Jesus. And you want an opportunity to get to know him, to have him come and live in you and through you and fulfill God's heart's purpose for you. So I'd like to take this time, and if you who are here in the room would join me in repeating this prayer, and you who are online do so as well. And it is an exchange. It's more than just words being spoken. Our hearts are open, and we pray. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your heart of generosity, for sending Jesus Christ to live, die, ascend into heaven, and ever live to make intercession for me. I choose today to surrender my life. Jesus, come be my Savior, be my Lord. Fill me with your life, your love, and send me in a direction that will do me good. I thank you that I can say now that I belong to Jesus Christ and I am saved. Amen. Amen. For those of you who uh, prayed that prayer, we would invite you to let us know about it by sending a comment to salvation at lifecenter.org, and then we will follow up with you. And um, here's my co-service director. Thank you. You're doing a wonderful job. Um, yeah, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Also, we, Dr. Buddy asked us to pass the, um, our pledge cards, but many of you might have made a one-time gift. And, or you might have said you want to start your three months. If you need six, take six. But if we can, let the Lord challenge you. to If you can do it in three, or if you put six and you can do it faster, get your seed in the ground. But I know for me, there was an offering today and then a follow-up that the Lord wants me to do and then discuss with Elder Tani. Also, if you have someone that you know is not here today, I know that I've got someone that's not here. I'm going to want an extra pledge card to take to them, share it with those at our prayer group, share it with someone that you know is a part that's not here. Encourage each other to give because it's our house. It's God's house, but it's ours as well. So we're going to take up an offering right now for those that want to give now, or if you want to write your first check for your pledge card or and, and make that. We're going to take a, how do we can, uh, if we could get the, we want to serve the congregation. Yeah, if, if we could get the, um, the ushers. And once again, Pastor Samuel gave you all the ways. I won't repeat them, but you can give to Life Center all the different ways that you can give. And go ahead and prepare your offering now, and we will actually serve you an opportunity to do that. Are you excited about the giving campaign? Did Dr. Buddy do a good job today presenting and laying it out to us?
We're seeing the fruit of it. We're seeing the fruit of it. And it takes a lot. It always takes more than we think. And God has blessed us with this wonderful property. We're going to keep taking care of it, and we're going to see it come to be all that God has. I'm excited about seeing the foyer, the restrooms, the classrooms. We already separated the youth. Come on forward. We already separated the youth. They're going to be doing things to their room. We've got other plans for the, for the middle schoolers of, to get them out of the social hall. We're just going to keep seeing the fruition of that. Aren't you glad to see an apostle and prophet at their age active? It encourages me. I'm extending my lifetime of the productivity based on them. And they're not done yet. They're not done yet. So it's a blessing. They come with a pure heart asking us to do what God is asked, being obedient. So let's put, be obedient today. Let me just bless it one more time, and then we're going to serve you, and then we'll finish up as service directors with the last part of the service. Father, we thank you for the message that came forth today, Lord. We thank you that as Pastor Samuel prayed, we agree with those prayers, Lord. We agree with the miracle that Dr. Buddy said was taking place. Lord, we need a miracle in our finances. We need you, Lord, to touch us. But most of all, Lord, we want to be dependent upon you. And we don't want the spirit of mammon to attach to us, our businesses, our lives. We want to have a heart of generosity. And Lord, we want to see the things that money cannot buy uh, be given to us from you. Open the windows of heaven today. Lord, and pour out a blessing, and Lord, let uh, the miracles take place as we begin this 2019 capital campaign. Let those watching online be excited about it. Let those that are not here today, Lord, as we share with them and make it known for them to get excited and be a part as we join together as a family to see all that you desire to accomplish in this house accomplished. Build this house, Lord, and we want to be obedient to it now in the name of Jesus. that jumped out at when Elder Blake was praying was to build. And Life Center is a place of building, building the body of Christ, equipping and empowering the body of Christ. And many of you here may have visited several times in the past and you're here today and the Lord has been prompting you. This is the place that I want you to align your life and your destiny with. And if you've made that decision that you'd like to make Life Center your home church, that place where you can come in covenant with the body and begin to just learn and grow and experience the fullness of Christ in your life, we have ministers here who will take you and provide you with information on how you can become a member. Is there anyone here? All right. And with that, we thank you. There is also an opportunity. If you have a need for prayer, we have altar ministers available to uh, minister prayer to you after service. We are just about at the end of uh, today's activities. And so I would call the altar, men altar ministers up. 
And then I would lack, like, as we dismiss, that you would take all of your fellowship out into the hallway so that we have the sanctuary clear and they can minister in freedom. We will be closing the doors 30 minutes after service. And please remember that you can get a copy of today's sermon in the bookstore. It will be open. And also, those who brought children, don't forget your children. Uh, and we always get a chuckle out of that. We know you love your children and you wouldn't dare leave here without them. But they are available for you uh, to pick up. Doing a great job. We're just kind of flowing together. Isn't she doing a wonderful job? One more thing that we do have, Christy is going to be serving out in the front. Okay. Christy's going to be serving out in the front. And she's out there to take volunteers for the Envision Conference. So as we continue to build, we've got our conference coming up. It's a big conference. It's one of our major conferences that we do, and we could use your help. So if there's, uh, they can give you more information out in the foyer. They're giving their time to tell you about the different opportunities that you can serve. So please feel free to go by there and ask the questions that you want. So if you already know you can serve, sign up for something. If you just want to learn more about it and ask the Lord about serving, then go by there and get that information as well. Amen. Is that it? I'm going to let you pray us out of here and uh, stand to our feet and let's let Elder Sharon bless us and dismiss us in prayer. My goodness, God, you are so faithful to us as your people. You don't allow us to stay in the place that we are in, but you are continually pressing us on into that mark of the prize of the high calling. You've dealt with our hearts today, not just in finances, but even in love, in sharing our gifting, that ministry, that hinge pin that turns everything in our lives. Thank you so much for speaking to our hearts today. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that as we leave here, we leave this place, but our hearts are continuing, continually stirred to look for ways to be able to give, to give of us, ourselves, but to give of your life that is within us, to give it to those that we come in contact with. I bless these people and I declare that they are covered fully and completely by the love of God and the blood of Jesus and the angels of God and all of your well wishes and desires for them. I ask, Father God, that this week that you show yourself strong on their behalf. Answer prayers. Turn situations around. Release joy and peace in the walls of the homes, Lord. Bring unity in a deeper measure in marriages. Bring healing to bodies and minds, Lord. We agree, Lord, that we are your people. We are called by your name and that you are mindful of us to do us good. So I release you now in the name of Jesus, by the love of God, in the goodness of God, for you to conquer and overcome in every situation you have this week. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You are dismissed. Altar workers, the altars are available for you. And don't forget your children. <laughs>